And so I've worked in, initially from the adaptive management tradition, which is a tradition where you do multi-party, multidisciplinary workshops um, with um, diverse um, stakeholders and you collectively explore a problem space to see if you can uh, differentiate where the key research questions are, where the key points of negotiation are, and you kind of basically you facilitate the negotiation through a kind of analytical process. And uh, I wanted to see how that, how to actually, if you like, deepen that skill set. And my, so my research led me down to these kind of foundations in terms of adaptiveness at the kind of personal and sort of uh, conversational levels. And um, so I've developed some new models for what is going on when we are feeling our way into situations. Um, I've articulated a non-standard logic, for example, which I found necessary in order to describe the kind of feel that you have for situations. And if that seems opaque, a good example is to remember what it's like to have something on the tip of your tongue. It's very clear that we know something about what we've forgotten, for example, if it's on the tip of our tongue, but we also don't know in the sense of being able to say what it is. And so there's a kind of a, uh, it's an instance from everyday experience which shows that there's a kind of a creative possibility and kinds of knowing in the felt which we may normally don't pay very good attention to. And so anyway, I've done a whole lot of work to to say, to articulate what, what is going on in those kinds of processes and to start to build research methods uh, and frames of reference for investigating that kind of practice. Well, probably there'd be three ways I get students to use uh, reflection in my units. Uh, one of them is I might set them a task like, for example, a negotiation exercise where it's a, it's a role play. And I will often ask them to do a kind of double track process where they're both negotiating and they're paying attention to how they personally are, are present in the negotiation process. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get them to, to notice, for example, when they segue from being more reactive to being more reflective within the negotiation process. And um, I teach a negotiation using a practice tradition called principled negotiation, which is about shifting from positional bargaining to interest-based bargaining, plus a few other things. But that shift has actually got in it a kind of a layer which is about how kind of reactive and mechanical is the process and how open is it and what, what kind of creativity is built into the way in which you approach your negotiation practice. So I'm asking students to pay attention as they are doing their negotiation to how they and their colleagues are doing their work. And that's got this reflection in action component in it. So that's one layer. Um, second layer is uh, I'll, I'll, I use a lot of workshop exercises in my teaching because uh, a lot of the stuff I'm, in, I'm focused on is really only learnable by doing it. It's helpful to learn about it as a frame, but you can't actually learn the skill because it's, it's know-how. You can't learn it unless you actually try it out. So there's a lot of practicums, and I structure the practicums. The usual model is we do something and then we reflect as a group, well, sometimes individually and always as a group on it. And so there's a kind of a reflection on action thing going on there that's sort of designed into the teaching process. And the third thing I do is I set some assignments usually uh, which have got a kind of a personal reflection dimension to it. Uh, I had a group work course this semester, for example, where I got students to reflect on the experience of group work. And the reason for that is because working together is fundamental to solving uh, nearly all environmental problems um, because there are many stakeholders involved and no one entity that's got the level of control that's necessary to produce a good outcome. So that, that kind of a capacity to work collectively is very important. So that's one example. And not in, I was teaching a course on environmental impact assessment and environmental impact assessment in practice often involves you in tensions around who will make money in what ways and um, uh, tensions with political agendas. You know, if you're working for a consultant who's working for a developer, there's going to be an advocacy expectation from the developer end of the thing. If you're working in government, you may well find, depending on how senior you are, that your uh, professional judgment is kind of woven in with a very complex and perhaps difficult political environment. And uh, so I wanted people to reflect on what their own personal ground was in relation to ethics in professional practice in EIA. Uh, so it's a, I think it's a key thing to actually prepare people for the realities of professional practice. And, and you, it's really quite personal, that kind of ethical stuff. So a reflective practice piece was very appropriate for that.